Dear God, I just want to thank you so much again for who you are, Lord. Lord, I just pray as um, we kind of start this new series as we're going through the, the Old Testament, Lord. Lord, would you speak through me? Would you teach us something new about how you work and how we need to rely on you? We love you in your name. Amen. Okay, so how many of you in here are like me where sometimes you forget, okay? I, I, I tend to forget a lot of things. And here's the problem is this. There are the small stuff that I forget. Sometimes I forget to turn off the TV when I leave the house. There have been times where I've forgotten to actually turn off the oven, and that was fine, but it could have been dangerous, you know? Um, but then there starts to be some that are a little more serious where you forget to feed your animals and then you're like worried your animals are going to um, die while you're gone because you didn't feed them, which isn't true because they can probably survive for weeks, but, but I'll struggle with that sometimes. And then there's a little bit more serious where like you forget your best friend's birthday. I've forgotten that before. Oh, it's terrible. It's terrible. It is terrible. <sighs> I've forgotten major things like that, but but there's some that are even worse. There's some that are even worse. You see, um, I won't lie, but a couple years ago, I was tasked with picking my daughter up from school, okay? And I had forgotten that it was my day. And I, I think they told me, but I don't remember. And all I know is, I am in a meeting, I look down, and it is now 40 minutes after school is out. And my poor daughter, M over there, she does not have a cell phone at this time. Actually, she does, but wasn't using it at this time. And I remember, I'm like, oh, crud. And I'm running the car. Now, she goes to Vita, and it's not too far from here, but it's still a long way. And I am rushing there. And now I'm trying to remember, I even forgot where I'm going to pick her up. There's like three different pickup spots that I could be picking her up at, and I cannot remember which one. And then I'm freaking out. Did she try to walk to a friend's house? And it was crazy. And when I finally get there, oh, my goodness, it's embarrassing because it's even worse when there are other parents involved, and now they're looking at you like you're a terrible parent, and I'm a good parent, and I waited with your daughter, who poor girl was crying. It's like... And it was just the worst thing. And here is the thing that we forget sometimes. I forget sometimes. Now we've had to come up with a game plan where now uh, my daughter, she's here today. I'm talking about I didn't tell her I was going to talk about her. But now we have this game plan where she texts me, who's picking up? She'll even remind us like 30 minutes before, who's picking me up again today? Where are we getting picked up? Like we ha I have to be reminded so we won't make that mistake again. And this is crazy, but we are going to be talking about a story where you're going to see some parts where God sometimes, or not sometimes, a lot of times, he has to remind us. Remind us, remind us, remind us, because he knows that we forget. And so if you have your Bibles, open up to Exodus chapter 12, and we are continuing our, our, our walk through the Old Testament. If you guys don't remember, we did a Genesis series just a few weeks ago. I mean, not long ago, we did a Genesis series, and we ended with the story of Joseph. And if you guys remember, if you were paying attention, if you were here, Joseph um, was the, the grandson of, or great-grandson of, of Abraham, who God had promised Abraham, I will make you a great nation, and you will be my people, and I'm going to make you huge, and I'm going to bless you, and through your people, I'm going to save the whole world. He made this promise. And Joseph ends up in Egypt, and there's a famine, and everyone ends up in Egypt, and now we're picking up, as we get into this Exodus story, what happens is all of his brothers, the, the Israelite clan, ends up in Egypt, and they become slaves because there's so many of them. The, the Pharaoh and the Egyptians are so scared of them, they start turning them into their slaves. And if you've ever seen any, any of um, the, the Disney movies, there's one about, um, there's one about the, the Ten Plagues where, um, you know, let my people go, Moses and the, the Ten Plagues. I'm trying to remember what it's actually called. It's the easiest name, and it's just Prince of Egypt. Thank you so much. See, that, that was easy, Prince of Egypt. But we know that all of a sudden, at the beginning of Exodus, 
God's now sick of his people being slaves for 400 and something years. And he says, Moses, go get my people out. And Moses goes to Pharaoh and he said, let my people go. And Pharaoh's like, heck no, I got like a million slaves here. Why would I let your people go? And he's like, no, God said, let my people go. And Pharaoh's like, well, I'm God. Like and he believed that he was a God. And, and God's like, you ain't no God. So God does these 10 plagues that literally just to show his power. They are nasty. They're crazy. And it ended up with the last one is anyone that did not put blood from um, a lamb, a pure lamb, did not put blood ad- above their door pa- um, post when this, when this um, angel of death came by. If you didn't have that blood up there, you didn't trust God and obey him, your firstborn son would die and all your firstborn livestock would die. And guess what? The angel of death came. All these things happened. Pharaoh's oldest son dies. And finally, Pharaoh goes, okay, you know what? Maybe your God is the one true God. Get out of here. So he tells all the Israelites, take, get out of here. Go um, take money. The, he, they're going house to house. The, the Israelites are going house to house, and the, the Egyptians are like, yeah, here, here's some gold. Here's some jewelry. Just get out of here. Here's money. Just, just get out of here. And now we have over a million people are heading back to where God had promised them to the promised land, which is in Canaan, which is now where Israel is today. And they're on their way. And we pick up this story right here found. 17. Okay, I'll let Exodus chapter 13, verse 17. Okay, I'll let you get there. So we are just getting this point. They had just been released. They are leaving. It's over a million Israelites are going. And now they're heading, and Moses, they're following Moses, and they're like, no way, Pharaoh, let us go. This is crazy. And it says this. It says in verse 17 of chapter 13 of Exodus, it says, when Pharaoh left, let the people go, God did not lead them on the road through the Philistine country, though that was the shorter way. For God said, if they face war, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. So God led the people around by the desert road toward the Red Sea. The Israelites went up out of Egypt around the battle. So here's the thing is, God has already set this up. He's like, you know what? The easiest way would be to go along the ocean. I think it would have taken them like three days or something like that, crazy. But he's like, I'm worried. So it's not going to want to do what battle, so we're going to go through the desert. So he takes them through the desert. So they go a longer route. This is going to be important, important to know, because God's not done doing an incredible miracle. So God said, we're going to go through the desert. So they're going now, instead of, uh, I wish I should have had the map on here, but instead of going this easy route that was just going to go straight to Israel, he sends them out that they're going to go the long route. Like something, instead of taking three days, it might take several weeks. And so he takes them down, and he takes them down the desert, and it's interesting, but he has them camp where one side is mountains, the other side is where they just came from, they're locked in another side, and then on another side is water. There's only one way out. And so he takes them there, and they camp there, over a million people, right? They camp there. They got all their livestock, all this stuff. And then it says this. It is crazy. It says, they encamped there, and Pharaoh, I mean, God said, go camp there, because this is what he says. In verse um, 3 of chapter 14, it says, he said, Pharaoh will think the Israelites are wandering around in confusion, hemmed in by the desert, And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he will pursue them. But I will gain glory for myself. So God is setting up this plan. He's saying, I want you to go get stuck somewhere. And then Pharaoh's going to go, are they crazy? Why didn't they go the easy way? They must be jacked up. Maybe there isn't a God. Okay, this is what's weird about how we work. Pharaoh already forgot. He's going to trick him. He's already going to forget that there is a God that's way more powerful than him. And he's setting this up. So they go and they camp in this area where they're kind of landlocked. And then it says that Pharaoh goes, just like God said was going to happen. He's like, what the heck? What are those guys doing? Why did I let my slave force of over a million people go? That's it. Go get them back. And he sends all the rest of his army to go attack 
Israel. And you're like, this is weird, God. So you're setting this up. You're doing this on purpose. What's going to happen? You have this force of people on chariots. And then you have the Israelites that aren't really warriors. They were slaves. And he's setting up this battle. And as they're camped there, they see in the distance, they see Pharaoh and his army coming. And now they are freaking out. They are freaking out. And and people are starting to go, wait a minute. Why would God send us to this place to die? Does he really love us? And now they're upset. And Moses is actually saying, I love it. In, In verse 13, he says, Do not be afraid. Stand firm. We're good. Remember the God that did all those plagues? That's our God. He's on our side. Don't worry. But they're freaking out. And then one of the greatest miracles ever happens. You see, Moses goes to God and he goes, God, what do we do next? And God said, Moses, lift up your staff. Lift up your hand. And when he does that, I don't know how this works. I see opens up. Okay, so I don't know how this works. I can't explain it because that's a miracle. Miracles are miracles. They can't be explained. I love it. Um, This story, there there are historians that try to replicate it because this story has been found to be true. There's so much evidence to support this story that now historians are trying to go, well, it wasn't a miracle. There was some earthquake that caused the water to stop. Or there was this little route that if you just put a little stones here, it would, no, it's a stinking miracle. Okay, it says that God divided the sea. It just one wall here, one wall here. And it even said they walked on dry land. Okay, so even if it was if they're like, how did he dry up the land too? It would just it'd been underwater forever. And now it's dry. And it says they're able to walk around on dry land to get out of the way. So they start walking across this water. And the Israelites, I mean, the Pharaoh and his souls are right there. It is crazy. It's said that God even put a, a cloud between them so they couldn't see to kind of stop them. Because remember, they're in chariots. They can go faster. And this is the crazy part. But as they're finally about to get out of the Red Sea, as they're finally about to walk out of it, the Egyptians are released and they're starting to come through. And now they're freaking out. And that's when God says, watch what I'm about to do. And God then has the waters where they are come, cover up, and completely destroy all those Egyptians. They completely drown. And it says this, that the Israelites saw that all happen. They saw all of that, and they walked across completely on dry land, and they now knew for sure that God was the God of this universe. All that evidence right there. And we are coming apart. And now God, as we come out of Exodus chapter 14, it's cool. Chapter 15 is where they just praise God and thank him and thank him and thank him for saving their lives. Thank him for being the one true God. And they have this party, and it's amazing. There's some cool stuff happening, and it's setting up to where we're going to go over the next few weeks. You're going to find out that they're going to forget. They're going to be mad. They're going to be complainers, all this stuff. Guys in the back, am I really that boring? If I am, I'm sorry. I apologize. But obviously, it must be too boring for you guys to pay attention. So I apologize. Um, So you're welcome to go outside and talk all you want. That would be totally fine. Okay. Thank you. So he's setting this up. He's setting this up for what's going to happen about how they're going to get out of um, Egypt and go into the promised land. And so we are doing a series, and I forgot to say it earlier, we're doing a series called Into the Promised Land. They are going to go through the desert, and they're finally going to this promised land that they were promised for hundreds and hundreds of years. And this was kind of the first step. And so what I want to do right now is I want to take a step back, and I want to talk about some things that we can learn about God just through this quick story. Just the story, and a lot of you, if, if you grew up in a Christian home, if you come to church a while, you've heard of the part in the Red Sea, okay? You've heard of that. It, it's not a new story, but there might be some things that you would have missed that explain who God is, and that's what I want to talk through. 
So first thing I want you to understand something, this. You need to understand this, that God is in control and he has a plan. We are starting to see right now that God is completely in control and has a plan that's going on. Here's what's cool, is if he is in control and has a plan with them, he is in control and has a plan for you. Now listen, we can mess up that plan a little bit because we're sinners and and we do stupid. Th- he has an is in the midst of that God still has an ultimate plan. He has an ultimate plan that guess what? One day he's going to return. He's going to save the world. He has an ultimate plan for us as Christians. And he had an ultimate plan for these Israelites. He was setting this whole thing up. We got to remember that because there are many times in our lives where we feel like, God, are you really in control? I don't know what you're doing in my life. Hey, just this week, life's been crazy. A lot of crazy things happen with our family and, and some family members and stuff. And, and it's hard not to sometimes go, but God, are you really in control? Do you really know what you're doing? And God's like, yes, let me show you through the story. And so I want you to know some things that God knows about us that's very, very important that we learn through this story right here. The first thing that we learn is this. God knows, God knows what we can handle. God knows what we can handle. I love it. There's a verse in the New Testament. I forgot to put it on there, but it talks about how God knows how, uh, what we can handle in our temptations. In fact, it says he'll never put us in a situation, a temptation that we can't handle. He'll always give us a way out. We also know that God knows what each one of you can handle. And I love this. You see this right in the beginning of what I told you in chapter 13, verse 17. It says this, that it said they could have gone the easy route, but they decided to go the hard route because God was worried that they could not face the battles with the Philistines and with the different Egyptian outposts and they might get scared and go back home. You guys understand, he's leading a million people, and God is worried that if all of a sudden they had to come against an army, they'd be like, we're not equipped. We don't trust you, God, that they would turn back. So God said, guess what? I have to take you the hard way, the longer route, because I know what you can handle. Guys, listen, I don't know what's going on in your life. Have you ever thought through this? That God knows what you can handle? Do you actually know that means that God also knows what you can't handle? And do you know there's a chance that there might be certain things that God hasn't given you because he's like, you can't handle that? I will tell you right now, can I be honest with you? God has never made me rich. I prayed to be rich. I have prayed all the time, God, help me win the lottery because if I was rich, I would bless the world. You know I'm generous. You know that with whatever I have, God, I could change the world if you just gave me a lot of money. And you know what's funny is God God hasn't given me a lot of money. (laughs) I'm I'm not rich, okay? Um, I'm I'm not poor, but pretty close to it, okay? And I share that with you for this reason is, what if God knows that I can't handle a lot of money? What if God's saying, Trav, you don't understand. You think you'll be generous, but I know this. If I give you a lot of money, you think you won't need me, and you will then end up walking away from me, and you actually won't be, um, you won't be an instrument for me. I don't know. I know this. God knows what I can handle. God knows what I can take because we know this with the Israelites. He is worried. He knew if I take you the easy route, you're going to want to go back to Egypt. So I'm going to have to take you a different route. And this should remind you with, I don't know where God has you. I don't know where God is putting you, but God is letting you know that, he, you know, he's still protecting you in a way. Now, listen, there are some things that you're going to go through that you're going to feel like you can't handle them. And, yes, there's going to be some deaths. There's going to be crazy things. And some of those you can't handle because it's going to turn you to God. And we'll talk about that later. But the point is we don't understand that God does have a plan. And he, he knows what we can handle. We see that with the, with the Israelites. The second thing is this, is God knows that sometimes we forget what he already did. A few months ago, I said, you know what? If you want to start realizing how powerful his God is in your life, you should 
Thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him. And I bet you we don't thank him. I bet you that you'll be praying. I think I told stories how I'd pray for an A, and then I'd get an A, and I'd forgot to say thank you to God. I would pray that God would save, would protect us, and all of a sudden I'd get back, and I would never thank God that he protected us. I would pray to God that we get to Whitewater on time and that no cars break down, but when I get there, forget to thank God. Like, we probably forget to thank him. So if we forget about God in our life, and God knows that we're going to forget. Remember, he knew that Pharaoh was going to forget what he had just done. He had just done 10 unbelievable miracles. Unbelievable. With the 10 plagues. I mean, all of them were insane, crazy, crazy miracles. And yet, when Pharaoh saw that they were lost, he knew they'd forget. You know what's funny? He knew the Israelites would forget. Okay, let's be honest. If, if God just did 10 huge plagues and saved you, okay, let's just say that God did something amazing in your life and he saved you, and then he puts you in a hard situation, and Pharaoh and his soldiers are coming, don't you think you'd be like, Psht, who cares about the Pharaoh and their army? They're coming, they got swords, and I probably, I would be laughing at them. God, you guys are idiots. We have God on our side. You guys, God could just squish you like this. Are you, yeah, hey, I'd probably run that way, like, try and stab me. Watch what God's going to do, right? That's not what they were thinking. They were scared we we're going to die. They forgot. And God's up there like, just a couple days ago, I saved your butts. I got you. And what does he do? He goes, hold on. And he opens the Red Sea. And he had to remind them. Listen, God knows that you're going to forget. God knows that you're going to forget about him. He knows that. Listen, that's why you're supposed to keep coming on the weekends. It's coming to church on the weekends, going to TNL on Tuesday nights, it doesn't make you more holy. It, it's not designed that if you go, you're going to heaven. No. In fact, I want you to know, perfect attendance does not get you in heaven. You come every week and you stand before God and he goes, why should I let you in? And you're like, well, I went to church every week. He goes, Psht, stupid. Perfect attendance isn't getting you to heaven. No, no, a relationship with Jesus Christ saying, God, you are my Lord. I gave you my life. You're in charge of my life. That's what gets you in heaven. That's it. You don't have to even do anything other than that. You say, God, I want you in charge. Whatever you want, I'm going to do it. God, you're in control. God, come in my life and be Lord of my life. That's all it is. And then if I make mistakes, if I do things wrong, if I forget, he's like, don't worry. You want me to be Lord. I'm Lord of your life. That's all he wants. He wants a relationship with you. Perfect attendance doesn't help, but you know what perfect attendance does to you? Remind you. You come on the weekend, you're having fun, you're like, oh, that's right. God, I almost forgot about you this week. Thanks for the reminder, Trav. Thanks for the reminder, Taylor. Thanks for the reminder, Shara. Thanks for the reminder, Kinsey, during worship. Like, we, we're reminded that we have a God that who is in control and loves us. And sometimes we forget that. That's what happens on the weekends. That's what happens during the week when we're reading our word. Is It's a reminder of who God is and what he's done in our life. And the last thing is God knows. God knows that we tend to turn to him when we are scared and hopeless. You know what's interesting? Is if my life was easy, if everything went great, if I was the coolest person in school and I was the best athlete and I, and I had all the money in the world and everyone loved Travis and no one didn't like Travis and no one made fun of Travis and everything was easy and my life was great, I would never need God. I would never need him. At least I would think that. And God knows that when we're going through hard times, a huge test, you're worried your life sucks. When we are getting made fun of, when you have a huge test, you're worried you're not gonna you're not gonna pass. When you have friends that don't want to be your friends anymore, hey, when you um, didn't do good in your sport, go down the list. When you don't have the money but you really want that, God knows that hard times in our lives tend to. Those are the times where we tend to turn to him. We tend to turn to him when we are scared and hopeless, when we feel like we can't win, when we feel like we can't do it ourselves, when we feel like we're scared. And because God knows that, sometimes he has to put you through those hard things so you remember you need him. 
The Israelites had already forgotten they didn't need God anymore. And he's like, are you serious? Don't worry. I'm going to remind you. I'm going to have you walk through the Red Sea and show you that I'm ultimately in control. Which is funny because all those plagues, all those plagues that, that God did in Egypt, the Red Sea, the Red Sea was the miracle that when they went into the promised land, people were like, you don't understand. That's the people where the Red Sea was opened up. They walked on dry land and Pharaoh's army got destroyed. That was the miracle they all remembered. Oh, yeah, there was those cool plagues. But, oh, my goodness, he split the Red Sea. God knows that when we're hopeless, when we're hurting, when we're scared, that's when we turn to him. God knows that. So, listen, you're going to go through hard times in your lives, and what if that's God just reminding you, you need me. You need me. I'm going to be the one that's there for you. You need me. I'm the only one that can save you. I'm the only one who can change your life. I'm the only one that can work in you and save you. You see this little story, the Red Sea, that a lot of us grew up learning. It's crazy how much we can learn that God wants us to know just from that little story. Hey, my hope is this. I want to remind you, God has a plan. He is in control. And I think a lot of times we forget. And I'm hoping today will just be a reminder. God knows these things. Don't forget this on your walk with, with Jesus, whether it's this week, whether it's next month, whether it's when you get into high school. But we have a God who's in control. Let me go ahead and pray. Dear God, I just thank you so much for who you are, Lord. Lord, I just pray that you would just continue to remind us of who you are and that you are in control, Lord, that you have a plan for us, a purpose for us, and you want to use us, Lord. We love you so much in your name.